Welcome to another video. This is one of those limit problems that you do all the work, you get to the end, you still get it wrong just because you ignored a tiny detail. If your teacher says you look, X approaches pi over two from the right, they did that for a reason. So don't assume that from the right is not important. Let me show you why. Now, because this is a finite point, not infinity, the first thing you want to do is plug in pi over 2. Forget about whether it's from the right or left, okay? So if you plug in pi over 2, cosine pi over 2 is 0, and 1 minus sine pi over 2 is 1 minus 1, which gives us 0, so we have a 0 over 0 situation, so this is an indeterminate form, okay? That's what we have, 0 over 0. We don't want 0 over 0, okay? And every time you get 0 over 0, see if there's some algebraic or trig identities you could use, but because this is simplified and you're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule, let's do it. So I'm just going to use L'Hopital's rule and not fuss around with anything else. Now, by L'Hopital's rule, we know that this expression by L'Hopital's rule is going to be the derivative of the numerator, okay? The limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the right. The limit of the numerator, I mean the derivative of cosine x, is negative sine x. Nice. And the derivative of the de denominator is going to be, the neg this is going to be 0 minus, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. That's what we have. So what we have is equal to the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the right of sine x over cosine x. Okay, let's plug this back in. Pi over 2 is going to be 1. Plug it in here, it's going to be 0. So you have 1 over 0. Now, I've seen a common mistake, a common mistake that many students make, that you get a constant over zero does not make your answer infinity. No, it does not mean the answer, the limit is infinity. Because one over zero in a case of limit depends on whether what you get from the right hand side and what you get from the left hand side are the same. Now, if the question specifies that you're moving from the right hand side, you have to check out what the graph looks like. If you don't know what the graph looks like, at least you have to know what the values will look like. So you can use anything. In fact, I'm going to show you in three ways how to decide what your answer is. For me, I know what the answer is. Let me write the answer. The answer is negative infinity. Most students will write infinity, but it's not. So I just want to show you why. Let's get rid of this. So first case, I'm going to show you what happens as x approaches pi over 2 from the right. And I mean, as sine x approaches pi, as x approaches pi over 2 from the right for sine x and cosine x. Let's do the first one, okay? I'm just going to sketch the graph of both sine x and cosine x. The graph of sine x goes this way, okay? And this is pi over 2. So, as x approaches pi over 2 from the right, it is going toward 1. It is still slightly less than 1, but it's a positive number, right? It's coming from the right. It's a positive number. It's approaching 1. So what we have here is a number that is slightly less than 1, but it's approximately 1. So let's just take it to be 1, but it's a positive number. If we sketch the graph of Cosine x, it's going to be something like this. Right? And this is where it is zero. But remember, we're approaching from the right. So, as cosine, this is cosine x. This is sine x. As cosine is approaching pi over 2 from the right, every value here is negative. So even if we assume that this is 1 over 0, this is not exactly 0. It's almost 0, but it's a negative number. So it's a negative number. 
So when you have your one over zero, it is still a negative infinity because this is an infinitely small negative number. So you have to recognize that negative and that's how we decide it's negative infinity. That's one way. Okay, number two. Sine x over cosine x is tan x. So it's as if you're saying this is the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the right of tan x. It is also important that you know how to sketch the graph of tan x. In fact, let's even say you don't know how to sketch the graph of tan x. Do your four quadrant kind of analysis. Four quadrants. You go this way and then this way, right? Remember the right on this kind of graph goes in this opposite direction because you're coming from the end from pi over 2 from uh, 360 degrees you're going back to 0 so instead of us going from 0 this way you'll be going this way and we're going to pi over 2 but you know that tangent is positive here tangent is positive here it's negative here negative here so as tangent is approaching pi over 2 from the right it is coming from the negative perspective and at pi over 2, it is undefined, so it is a negative infinity. That's another way you see it. Or we can as well sketch the graph of tangent. If you sketch the graph of tangent, see what you get. It's going to be this. It looks like this, and there's a vertical asymptote here at pi over 2. The second graph you sketch is going to look like this too. Something like that. You notice that if you're approaching pi over 2 from the right, this number is chasing this asymptotic line, but it's going to negative infinity. This is even more obvious. So what you see is as x approaches pi over 2 from the right, 10x approaches negative infinity, which confirms this answer again. So be careful when you get one-sided limits because infinity is more likely to show up, but you have to decide, is it positive infinity or negative infinity? Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.